Now it's time for our first presentation. I'd like to welcome Colonel Brian Laidlaw, the 325th Fighter Wing Commander of Tyndall Air Force Base, and Colonel Scott Matthews, the Director of the Tyndall Recovery Program Management Office, uh, to the stage. Uh, Colonel Laidlaw actually rode out the hurricane, uh, Michael, on Tyndall Air Force Base that, Tyndall, that fateful day in October, and he's been leading this massive recovery effort uh, that began the very next day. Colonel Matthews is the Air Force Civil Engine is out of the Air Force Civil Engineering Center in uh, San Antonio, Texas, and Colonel Matthews has uh, spent the last three months working closely with Colonel Laidlaw on the recovery effort. Colonels Laidlaw and Matthews will be presenting the state of the installation, uh, and we welcome the colonels to the stage. Good morning, everybody. I will tell you, as the base commander up at Tyndall, uh, it is absolutely energizing to me to see this room full of people who all have one interest in mind, and that is rebuilding our base uh, up at Tyndall. Uh, I'm told that there were over 400 of you here, and by the looks of it, I think we've actually exceeded that number. And it means a lot to me to look out and see this many people that care enough to be here this morning. So I'll tell you, every base commander in the history of Tyndall, the 79 years we've been uh, uh, on that peninsula, will probably tell you the same thing. And that's that we enjoy a genuine, heartfelt support from everyone here in Bay County. I think you got a little bit of a taste of that this morning uh, from Congressman Dunn, Mr. Patronus, Mr. Neubauer, Mr. McDonald. Uh, that's genuine. And I will tell you, like any base commander before me will tell you, is we don't take that support for granted. We absolutely, sincerely appreciate that support. And as we look to the future, the truth is we're going to need that. We're going to need, continue to need that support, and we're going to need the help of the 400 of you who are here today uh, as we look towards the future. So on behalf of all the men and women who live and work up at Tyndall Air Force Base, I want to personally thank all of you for being here today and taking that very important first step to being part of something that's going to be truly special out in the future. So thank you for being here. So I'm not an engineering expert. You're going to hear a lot from the engineering experts uh, as we continue throughout the day today. My role is to introduce you to Tyndall for those of you who are not from this area. I'd like to introduce you a little bit to what we do, to who we are, and what we provide to our nation. You can go ahead and go to the next slide, please. Okay, we started as an Army gunnery school back in uh, 1940. The first class that we welcomed onto that peninsula here in Bay County showed up on December 7th, 1941, a day that might, uh, might ring a bell uh, for a few of us. There were 2,000 students in that first gunnery class up at Tyndall. By comparison, just last week, we graduated our newest 156 students for the Combat Air Forces when we graduated them from our Silver Flag training site with our Red Horse folks last week. During World War II, we trained thousands of anti-aircraft artillery gunners, including one you may have heard of, heard of before. Uh, his name was Clark Gable, a famous actor, went through training up at Tyndall. We named the base after a man named First Lieutenant Francis B. Tyndall. He was a fighter pilot back in World War I. In World War I, he commanded the 22nd Aero Squadron. He's credited with four air-to-air -air kills, but if you ask some of the, uh, his compatriots in his unit, they say it was actually five, which, uh, which would have made him an ace in our, in, uh, in our lexicon. On October 29, 1918, almost 100 years to the day prior to Hurricane Michael, Lieutenant Tyndall push, uh, pursued an enemy aircraft deep into German territory. After the uh, ensuing battle, he ended up scoring one of those four air-to-air -air kills. For that act, the Army gave Lieutenant Tyndall a silver star for his gallantry. Like so many others, I'm proud of Lieutenant Tyndall, and I'm proud of all the men and women that we have trained throughout our long history on that peninsula up at, uh, 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 here, here in Bay County. So now I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Tyndall of today. Go ahead and go to the next slide, please. Thank you. This is Tyndall Air Force Base as of last October. We were home to two F-22 squadrons, one T-38 squadron. After the storm, we took one of those F-22 squadrons, we took the aircraft and the personnel, and we dispersed them to other combat units to beef up their combat capabilities in places like Alaska, Hawaii, and Virginia. 
The other F-22 squadron and the T-38 squadron, they've resumed our very critical mission training function over at Eglin Air Force Base, which is just down the road on Highway 98 over in Okaloosa County. The picture that you're looking at right there shows the landscape of Tyndall Air Force Base and a few of our more prominent mission partners on the base. We're home to 29,000 acres on that peninsula. 70% of those 29,000 acres are in their natural state and they're uninhabited. We patrol and protect 129 miles of Florida coastline along our peninsula. And if you ask me, we're home to some of the most beautiful beaches anywhere in the world up on Tyndall Air Force Base. <clears throat> I'll work clockwise around the picture there and introduce you to some of the airmen who work uh, on your Tyndall Air Force Base. I'll start with First Air Force in the 601st Air Operations Center, or as they like to say, America's AOC. They provide for homeland defense for the entire continental United States, right there at Tyndall Air Force Base. The 53rd Weapons Evaluation Group conducts all air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weapons testing for all U.S. fighters, and it's not uncommon to see fighters from other countries flying on our runways as well. The 823rd Red Horse Detachment 1, they train airmen on how to build up a bear base from scratch and how to conduct Air Force missions anywhere in the world. The Air Force Civil Engineering Center, and you're going to hear from a lot of those experts here today, they do a lot of things up on our base. Among them is extensive research and development into how to make our bases more resilient out into the future. The 337th Air Control Squadron, that's the last in the 9 o'clock position up there uh, on your slide, that's our schoolhouse for our next generation of air battle managers that we use to populate uh, combat Air Force units uh, throughout the world. So these are just some of our larger units. I assure you that there are a number of other uh, things that we do up on the base. Go ahead and go to the next slide, please. So as you saw in the video, our base took a beating and our people took a beating, but we're airmen. And by definition, that means that we are resilient. This slide shows a few of the missions that are already back up and running about 100 days after the storm. That's our job, that's what we do. We flew our first combat archer air-to-air -air weapons evaluation exercise in December. And then we went and did it again in January. And we're going to do it again in March, April, and May because the country needs us to. Yes, if you look in the top right-hand corner, that is the picture of an F-16 that does not have a pilot in it. We shoot live missiles at our F-16s. And it turns out when we shoot a live missile at an aircraft, it's a lot more comfortable for the pilot to fly it from the ground. So that's why there's, <laughs> there's not somebody in there. I, I can't make this stuff up. That is a real, that's a real picture. Okay. On the bottom left is a picture of one of the 156 silver flag graduates uh, who, who graduated from Tyndall last week. He's learning how to do rapid runway repair. That's right. We actually blow up mock runways uh, up at Tyndall and, uh, and teach our students how to fix them quickly and efficiently. On the bottom right is the floor of the 601st Air Operations Center. They resumed their air sovereignty mission for the continental United States on December 1st, a couple weeks prior to Secretary Wilson's deadline, told us to make it happen, told General Williams to make it happen, and we did. In the middle is one of 127 students who are back in class today at our Air Control Squadron schoolhouse. As early as next month, this lieutenant and some of his classmates are going to be sent out to combat air forces across the, across, the, uh, across the world to fight our nation's wars. So the Air Force depends on Tyndall to train the next generation of air warriors, from controllers to pilots to maintainers to engineers and to a number of other Air Force specialty codes that our nation depends on. So as we rebuild the buildings and other facilities around us, these missions must and will continue at Tyndall Air Force Base. Go ahead and go to my last slide, please. So I'm going to end with this slide, and this is the exciting part. So you're going to hear multiple times today that our goal is to build Tyndall Air Force Base as the base of the future. Part of that base of the future includes the potential for exciting new missions, like the ones you see on this slide. In December, the Secretary of the Air Force recommended to Congress that we use supplemental funding to rebuild Tyndall as the future home of up to three F-35 squadrons. That's the airplane that you see up here uh, to your left. On the right is the MQ-9. That is an unmanned aerial vehicle. Tyndall Air Force Base, uh, as Mr. Henderson uh, said earlier, Tyndall Air Force Base remains the preferred alternative to host up to 24 of those aircraft, pending the outcome of an environmental impact study and a final basing decision at some point in time in the future made by our Secretary, Secretary Wilson. 
If everything stays on track, we could see F-35s landing permanently at Tyndall Air Force Base as early as 2023. So a lot has changed since we welcomed that first gunnery class to Tyndall Air Force Base on Pearl Harbor Day back in 1941. And in truth, it would be a lot easier to rebuild the base that we had three and a half months ago. But that's not why we asked the 400 of you to be here today. We need your help not to build the base that we had, but to build the base that we need for the next 70, 79 years and beyond. The airman is gonna show us how to do that is my close friend, Colonel Scott Matthews. I'll tell you a true story. Just hours after the storm, I picked up a sat phone. Uh, it was about the only way that we could communicate with the outside world. And I talked to the Air Force and I said, I need some help. I need you to send me some of our best engineers to help my team of great engineers to rebuild our broken base. First, the Air Force sent me Colonel Pat Miller, the vice commander of Air Force IMSC. And next, they sent me a guy named Colonel Scott Matthews, who when he's not down here helping me fix a base, he's running the military construction program for the entire United States Air Force. So the Air Force did its part. The Air Force sent me two true champions from our ranks. So it's my pleasure to leave you in the very capable hands of my friend, Colonel Scott Matthews. Thank you.